Welcome back. We're going to look at a couple of reasonably available beers today. But will they be reasonably good? Let's find out. We've got Boundary Roads Bourbon Barrel Ale. Honest Abe, because, you know, whatever. No, and uh, similarly, Boundary Roads Spiced Rum Ale. Rum Runner. Anyway, Dave knows more about these than me, so yes. I'll leave it to him to do the run. Boundary Road, based in Auckland, are owned by Independent Breweries. Independent Breweries Limited that produces, in New Zealand at least, of the likes of Hagen. They also produce that venerable student favourite, Ranfurly Draft. It's not haute cuisine. Highest. Mm. It is beer. But Boundary Road is very much their craft niche label, a smaller production, headed by a more, you know, crew more focused on producing the interesting, exotic, crafty beers like we have here. What do you think, Japs? Should we start with a bourbon barrel or the spice I rum? think we should start with the rum. Rum, uh, okay. It should, be, it should be the lighter of the two, assuming mm. they have anything to do with the spirit involved. The many minutes of intense One internet consult. research mm. suggests there is not actually a spiced rum cask involved here, Don't although there may have been spiced rum cask chips. That is my thinking, my theory. The label is suitably ambiguous. You get narrative, but no cold hard facts. <clears throat> For some reason, their rum was very hard to come by during Prohibition. So rum runners used fast schooners to dodge the police and get their rum into Florida. We don't know why they bothered. It's much easier to smuggle in a beer bottle. It gives our ale notes of spicy molasses, complimenting its biscuity malts and light hot bitterness. The feds will never find it, assuming they can't read. We have 23 IBUs of bitterness, Wakatu hops, and flavours of rum and oak. Bottled at 5.5% alcohol by volume in a convenient twist hop. Interesting using the New Zealand hops with their big American rum spiel there. Yes. Mm. Well, at least they said the hops. There was approximately three useful pieces of information on that. Yeah. 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 So uh, yep. good on them. Yes. I don't know why I'm holding your crown opener. It's not logic. Eternal hopefulness, yeah. you know. Yeah. Anyway, let's see what we've got. Well, it looks carbonated. Yes. It's good here. It looks quite nice. Very actually. faintly very... off white head. Uh, orangey, ambery, isn't it? Yeah, it's one amber taste, touches of red. Yeah. I overcooked that one. Never yeah, mind. You did. It's alright. No, I do like the color. Air in contrast. It's quite nice and coppery. Yes. Mm. The aroma right. has faint hints of, mm. of white coffee and a little bit of rum. It does have that real sort of commercial beer fizz mm. to it, doesn't it? Well, I mean, it's that's not that nice. It's, it's not. It's not saying more, it's more anything otherwise. You know, it's a it's a carbonated beer, and that's fine. Because it didn't suggest it was uh, that it was otherwise. That I don't believe this has been aged in a spiced rum cask. If it had been, that would be very special. That would be on the label, mm, clear yeah. and bold. No, I think this has been influenced by spiced money. rum, either through infusion of chips of oak from a spiced rum cask, or by the addition of spiced rum itself at some point mm. to impart the flavours. And if it's the latter, I'm going to be very disappointed, because if there's one thing I hate, it's when brewers tip spirits into beer. It is That's not right. the way. Not the way. Some of my most vehemently despised brews have had, um, goodness me, I think uh, Green Man's Tequila Beer is right up there. Sitting it's not on, so bad. Oh, it's not so bad. Green Man are a good brewery. Mm. I can't vouch for a tequila beer, having never tried. I think they're one of the few organic breweries. I think I'd sure. rather drink my own <laughs> urine than drink that beer. Goodness me. Alas. Well. Thankfully, Green Man have many other superb beers that we can, and we mm. certainly will, sample. Well, but we'll to, to be rum that. runner, mm. Mm. I don't mm. believe we're looking at a spirit poured into a beer here. No, it's the got a lightly, get, lightly oaky maybe. I think there has been wood exposed to this beer, and that, that wood has itself been exposed to rum. Mm. Mm. And no, it could be rum cast. It's There's, a lot of exposure. It's very subtle, which is absolutely a very good thing. Mm. Uh, yes. Yeah. The big problem these beers have is that they get a big sack of chips and they go and swill it around, and what you end up with is some sort of horrible wood tea and it's not very nice this is mm. if nothing else it's subtle so it tastes to me primarily of beer yeah, which a isn't a bad thing cool yeah. drinkable ale with some extra flavors just subtly added subtly added in on top mm. yeah, that's actually pretty good i think i think mm. with the current trend that seems to be going around at the moment with all the, this oak addition to beer this is one of the better ones oh. i think it's they've done a really nice subtle job so many breweries are just dumping chips in and just making this horrendous oak tea, like you say, 
Yeah, it's just no, it's, it's no, no good. good. No good. Didn't work for the old Chardonnays. Doesn't work for the beer. This one though, I think it's good. It's well, balanced. Boundary Road has a good range of what we normally think of as craft beers. They have a, a chocolate oatmeal like porter. Yeah. Or less chocolate porter. As far as your six packs go, and they're certainly yeah. up there. Mm. They're, oh, they're, they're, they're definitely they're they're one of my favourite. Um, although you mentioned Hagen, we'll skip over Hagen. But yes. otherwise, the Boundary Road. You know, on brand beers, I think are some of the better ones. I'm very fond of their Pilsner, the Bouncing Check, ah, yes. and mm. uh, there are a few other ones are actually extremely good. I think for the a chocolate mousse, beer. chocolate porter is a favourite of mine during winter time. Oh. We'll get back. We'll come back around. We'll on the get to that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's possible to get sweet, bit chocolatey. I think it could be a slightly contentious issue there, but we'll uh, we good. will see. If we agreed all the time, this would be a very boring show. But, uh, this one. Me this one, I'm surprised by how uh, little, how little rum I'm getting, which is a very good thing because you do not want to drink a beer and go, "Ooh, rum," because that's a different drink. And if you want rum, mm. I'm sure it's available. No, I, I like it. I'm surprised. Mm. Yeah, but I do. I'm not really getting the hops. Well, I think it's yeah. just they're just in there for the bittering. Right. But that's fine, you know. Just to balance it out a little. If it's supposed to be about yeah. rum, you can't yeah. load it up with hops in there, yeah. otherwise you'd never taste it. Mm. Mm. No, no problem at all with that one. Lovely surprise. So, next up. You're honest the crowd opener again. Oh, I'm going to use it too. Wait, I'm going to break all the Another rules. Stone. And if the universe still exists afterwards, we'll proceed. Honest Abe, bourbon barrel ale. And I think this is another... Another case of chips. So a very similar beer, same alcohol content, same IBUs, but different hops and obviously different wood influence. Mm. Anyway, let's see. Have they maintained the restraint of the first one? That will be the question. Look at that. Breaking all the rules. I did so. quite enjoy the narrative on this label, so I shall regale you. Kentucky's two greatest exports are bourbon and Abraham Lincoln. As well as being 900 meters tall and a good top hat model, Abe was famous for his good nature and putting the United in the United States. We reckon that deserves a beer, so we've brewed this ale in tribute. A smooth ale with notes of biscuity malts, American oak, and unsurprisingly, bourbon. It may contain traces of freedom. Mm. So this one's for you, America. Much weaker hops this time. Otherwise, quite Glass. similar as a fundamental beverage. Mm. To our previous contender. I'm going to say it looks identical. I'm thinking it's slightly more brown. But it's possibly just just mm. psychological. But otherwise, it's a healthy colour. It seems yep. alright. Smells smells not dissimilar. More biscuity, more savoury. But yeah, it's um. It's a little drier, that fruitiness yeah. isn't there quite so much. It's a bit more raisin -y. But no, not a raisin by any means. Good one. I'm getting that. Mm. Oh, Let's see what's inside. You know, that's not bad either. I'm not tasting yeah. the bourbon personally, but I'm getting a faint, a faint smoky flavour, as you expect from some smoked oak, some charred oak, like you have from mm. an American bourbon barrel. Mm, that's good at the temperature. I think last time I had it, it was too warm. Right. And so it, it was just a bit yeah, it's just, syrupy. Just below room temperature and, today, yeah. so... Yeah. I think this is actually another winner. A very light, that's smoky nice, yeah. ale. Surprise after very surprise. Very lightly I was, I, I, I sat down entirely ready to be very derisive of these beers, but... I've I think been turned around on them. I think these are okay. A good amber beer with a little bit of smoke really goes a long way. Hmm. I think the two, two things go together quite well. You don't have to have a dark beer to have a smoky beer. A yeah, smoky beer doesn't need to be as, as smoky as, say, a Peter Isla Scotch. Mm. You can have a whiff of smoke, a hint, a puff. Just enough. Just add some flavour without becoming the flavour. Mm. Mm. <sighs> In fact, if I had any, any complaint about this at all, it would be that there isn't quite enough wood influence. Mm. If you hadn't told me, I'd be mm. perfectly willing to believe that that was... Uh, just beer. I think it hangs around at the end after you've swallowed. Mm. There's still a You're slight right. woodiness a, a there. A taste of a little bit of smoke in the back of my mouth. Like mm. there's, there's been 
some fumes wafted through there. Mm. I would not expect that from a regular ale, but having some some charred influence, some yeah. smoke, some wood. Again, yeah. not a lot coming through with hops, and this one was on with the Machu Echo, wasn't it? Mm. So that's a hop you'd expect to really get something out of. I think so it's I just think it's mostly all gone into the bitter, yeah. 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 yeah, which is fine. It's not the showcase of the beer, um, mm. but it does prop it up quite nicely. No, I think I'm. I'm going to say a thumbs up to both of those. Mm. They're both quite new additions, I believe, to the Boundary Road range. The wood finish or wood chipped mm. beers we have here. Mm. So maybe I'll stick around, maybe even expand the range. We get to see where they go with this. Yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be in there. So yeah, well done, Boundary Road. More of this. Take a leave the Hagen. I know you got to have something to, to say to nothing of the Rand Furby. Things down between your beers. Yeah, maybe, maybe. If you can't find any water. Well. Most illuminating. Catch us next time. And uh, if there's a beer you want us to take a wee look at, post it up. We'll do our very best. Let us Thank know you what you think of these beers if you mm. tried them. This has been The Sesh. Thanks for watching. See you next time.